I got Kleenex. I got up out of my deathbed to come here. I did it for two reasons. One, Michael Roth would never believe I was really sick if I didn't show up. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> and the other reason is something that Jimmy Cagney said to me, if I may just drop a name, and why not? Janine, that's the kind of goddamn hairpin you are. So here I am, I'm not going to say much, I don't have much to say. I'm awed by my colleagues, they're all smart. I'm just, <laughs> you know, I'm just a farm girl from South Dakota. That is true. You want to bring a cow in here? I'll show you. Okay. The very nice young man who conned me into doing this, may he live in peace, uh, told me that what I needed to do, the first time I said no, was pick a very, 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 very important topic. And I was thinking, well, it's like a beauty pageant, and it's the part where they say, what do I really care about? And I say, world peace. Um, <laughs> so I, I rejected that. But he, he wasn't easy to get rid of. Uh, he came back and he said, well, no, 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 no. Tell us about what's the most exciting thing you do in your life. And I thought, well, I'm not going there. <laughs> um, I may have been here before Michael, but I'm not that old. <clears throat> so. So finally, I picked out a topic that I thought I could do in nine minutes, not that I'm going to pay any attention to you, darling, forget it. Uh, uh, I've, I've been to the Oscars, I know what to do. Um, the, uh, just pretend you're Meryl Streep, that's what you do. Okay, now, my idea was, can you teach creativity? And I got the question mark, you've got to hang on, you've got to hang on. Get the question mark, can you teach creativity? And I thought, I can do that because, you know, the answer is no. <laughs> no, no, thank you, we're done. Um, now, of course, because I'm a teacher, you all already know that the fact that I'm done doesn't mean that I'm going to stop talking. So um, let's go on. Creativity, creativity, creation, creation. As far as I know, no professionals really sit around the dinner party talking about that issue. That word does not appear, and I've sat around some dinner tables. They just don't want to go there. It's not in their vocabulary. Um, two sets of people use the word creation, school teachers and right-wing religious nuts. And they are the si same side of a coin. You do know that. <clears throat> so creativity, we worry about it in the schoolroom. This is where we worry about it. And we start worrying about it with little children. We start worrying in nursery school. And we say, children, you must be creative. You must be creative. Go in that room, darlings. We've laid out all the paints and stuffy stuffs there are in there. Go stick your little paws in that. Do the mess around. Do the mess around. Do the mess around. And then bring your stuff out. And we look and we see all these accidental watercolors and we say, fabulous, creative, and then we hang them in the Zilka gallery. <laughs> you know, I always notice that people in the chemistry department don't do this. They don't say, kids, there's all the chemicals in the world in there. Just go in there, mess around. You know, I mean, could you imagine the chemistry department standing out in the rubble later saying, well, they, they were creative. <laughs> but in the arts, people seem to think we always run into this, that creativity is not about discipline, it's not about mastering a hard body of knowledge, it's not about how to learning a work ethic, it's not about finding what the rules are so you can break them. They think it's about being loose being loose, getting loose, doing what you feel like doing and getting loose. It would be this, here's the plan. 
go out tonight on Foss Hill, get naked, dance under the moonlight, go home, get a good night's sleep, wake up tomorrow, you're Picasso. <laughs> and you know, in the arts when we're trying to teach, we just know, you know, we have this challenge. And also, if you're teaching film, you have the added issue, which is everybody's an expert in your field. You're not one in theirs, but they are in yours. So we always have this to do. It's tough. So when you can't teach creativity, you do the best you can, and you try to ignore the slogans that people give you for it. You don't use think big, sorry darlings. You don't say out of the box, out of the box. When a student that I'm critiquing, if I sit down with him and he says, or she says, now I thought out of the box on this. What this means is, Janine, I've made a terrible puddle. Try to pretend it's brilliant. <laughs> uh, because a mess has been made. And you know, we never address these issues of like, what the hell is the box? Does anybody ever ask that question? Where is it? What is it? Do you get lunch in there? Because if you do, you know, I, I'm not going out, you know? So there are all these problems. Well, thinking big, I was thinking big when I was very little. Four years old, my best friend Carlene and I, there was a lot of snow in South Dakota. We decided to build the world's greatest, largest, biggest snowman. And we said, we will call him Hans Ling. It sounded good. <laughs> so we got busy because we thought, you know, people from probably maybe Omaha would come and see Hans Ling and they would maybe pay us nickels. And we, we built this big sort of thing, about that high, flat, all out. We were so proud of it. We were thinking big. My dad comes home from work and he says, girls, what the hell is that? Uh, I uh, thought out of the box instantly. And I said, it's Hans Ling's toe. <laughs> this is out of the box thinking. And my dad said, well, Janine, I'll be very happy when I see the other nine. So I was thinking, you see, this thinking big, you have to do big. You can't just think big, you gotta do big. I instantly lost interest in it. <laughs> so, you know, um, you just have finally, Josh conned me into doing it, and he asked me to talk about what I think about every day. Now you're getting in my realm. Now you're getting down to something I can really handle. I think about my grocery list. I'm so glad to know you went to cooking school. I'm on you now forever. Uh, I think about, has my husband yet again forgotten to recycle? Um, but I also think about film. Every day I look at two movies. Every day I play my drums so that I keep up my editing skills. And every day I read a little science. Not too much, but I try to stay. <laughs> You don't want to overdo that stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, it does, I think, mean that in our department we are trying to teach something that we have to call creativity. We know we can't teach it, but we know we can nurture it, we can tease it out, we can tickle its little toes, we can amuse it, we can surprise it, we can challenge it, we can coax it out from behind the tree, we can deepen it, we can play with it, maybe we can even inspire it. We also think of something else. If we're not terribly careful, we might hurt its little feelings. You know, we might scare it, discourage it, derail it, drive it away, God help us, kill it, kill it. How many teachers have actually killed creativity? It's something that you've got to think about every day. So we do what everyone here at Wesleyan does do. We fall back on the liberal arts tradition. We give film a context. We show films on the big screen the way they were made to be shown. We show all kinds of movies, old and new, silent and sound, foreign and domestic, documentary and fictional, experimental and avant-garde. We teach historical context across international borders. We teach close analysis of the masters. We cross-list courses with other colleagues and departments that know things we don't know. We teach theories of film. We teach the fundamentals of filmmaking. We demonstrate rules, and then we demonstrate breaking rules. We say, you do the rules, then you break the rules. And then we put it all together. History, theory, analysis, production, 
That's what we do, that's what you call liberal arts, that's what everybody does, and that's why you're here. We challenge, or we try to. We know risks have to be taken by our students. We know we have to let them crash in flames and not laugh at them. We know that we have to let them fail. We know failures will happen. We don't want to encourage them, but we know we have to accept them. They are part of the learning process. We provide a supportive context. We critique work with as much rigor as we possibly can, with total honesty, but we hope with tact, humor, and heart. We take our work seriously. We take our students seriously. We take our students' work seriously. We take what we're doing seriously, but we try not to take ourselves too seriously. We remind ourselves every day this thing. We may be wrong. We may be wrong. We may not get it. We may be wrong. We too can make mistakes, and we must be open to learning from our students. So we think about our responsibilities of, as teachers. We share our passion. We have fun together. We go to the movies. We cook together. We talk about everything. We eat. We eat an awful lot. We eat more than other majors. <laughs> our own scholarship grows out of this daily work of teaching and our constant rethinking of our ideas about films. What I have to say to you in light of these wonderful talks isn't really very profound. It isn't really maybe very important, but it is the truth. And it's if you ask me what I think about every day, I really think about teaching because I am a teacher. I teach school, that's what I do. And that means I have to be sure I'm not destroying the thing that I'm trying to make grow, that I stay fresh, and I stay respectful of my students. I assume nothing. Every day I get up and I come to work, and every day is the beginning. And each day something fabulous might happen. Something wonderful, magical, delightful, delicious, or hideous and horrible. Yesterday, all hideous and horrible. <laughs> all hideous and horrible, <laughs> badass indeed. Uh, but I, uh, you know, what I know is I just do this. I don't have to think big. I don't have to be inside a box or outside a box. I just have to stay focused. I have to care. I have to love my subject. I have to tolerate my colleagues. I have to... <laughs> I have to know my students, I have to respect my students, I have to keep on top of my subject, I have to challenge myself. And you know what, the great thing about this is, I can rely on the Wesleyan University liberal arts tradition, I can rely on these guys to do all the serious thinking here, I can, I, they will help me if I go to them, they will help me. They will answer my questions and they will want to work with me because it's a collaborative environment. And you know what? I'm an old lady. I'm 76 years old and I've been doing this for 46 years and so far, so good. Thank you.